So winning. Mm -hmm. So for me, I do understand oppression and the challenges, which is why I try to always keep it upbeat and keep it positive for myself. I like to think about, <coughs> even though we have challenges and we do, I like to think about uh, our ancestors. Mm -hmm. I always think, you know, when it's um, that time for me as a woman, you know, and I'm cramping, I'm not feeling my best. I still got to get up. I still got to go to work. I still have to make my appointments with my clients. I still have to go do my speaking events. Whatever it is I have to do, I still got to adult. <laughs> I still got a parent, grandparent. Mm -hmm. I um, think back to what it must have been like to have all the pressures that they had back then. Mm -hmm. And to, let's say that the sister was on her cycle, mm -hmm. but you still got to get in that field. You got to pick the cotton. Mm -hmm. You got to go and, and breastfeed their children and have a little bit left for your own. You know, um, the mental anguish, the physical and the spiritual, uh, bug breaking, all these things that um, historically have taken place to our people. That's a motivator for me. Mm -hmm. Welcome to another episode of Crooked Courage. Um, I'm so excited today on our show we have Africa Porter. Uh, for those in our church, uh, she's the <laughs> daughter of June Porter, but for those in our community and those watching elsewhere, she is um, a shaker. I don't know if she would like to be called a badass woman, but she <laughs> is a badass woman. <laughs> um, and so before mm -hmm. I say any more about her, we're just going to begin to engage her. Um, the purpose of Crooked Courage is to be able to look into people's lives. Sometimes we see people on the surface, but with Crooked Courage, we really invite you to see the humanity of each person and that all of us essentially have more in common than we have um, that is not alike. So again, welcome. welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored. I appreciate it. I do watch your show. And I really like it. I love the one with Eric, my good friend from the Silver Room. I learned so much more. I've known him 20 years. But your interview showed me so much more of him. Yeah. So I think that was amazing. And thank you again for having me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I want to start out kind of light um, and then kind of get into maybe some of the reasons I invited you on this show. Um, so first of all, I just want to ask you a little about your childhood and um I said that your name was Africa, so I'm curious to just engage you and ask, was that your birth name? What what name did your parents give you and just your mm -hmm. journey in terms of how you name yourself? Absolutely. Thank you again. So, um, yeah, I grew up right here in Hyde Park. Um, we grew up on 54th and Greenwood. Um, mm -hmm. We were the only black family on the block. And I say that because a lot of who I am now uh, stems from my early childhood beginnings in Hyde Park. Although we were in Inglewood most of the time, because that's where our church was, on 64th and Sangamon, mm -hmm. I say uh, we were in church eight days a week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. <laughs> right, we had seven days. We was there all the time. And it was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful experience because everything we needed was right there in our church. Mm -hmm. From after school programs, learning instruments, arts and crafts, anything we wanted to do, our church provided it. Mm -hmm. Even... Um, public speaking, mm -hmm. you know, we had so much happening at our church that it was a really, really, really um, diverse cultural experience mm -hmm. and a one-stop shop uh, for culture, spirituality, understanding, education. So um, I'm the youngest of six and um, all of our names start with a J. My parents' names are J names. My father, um, the late great Reverend Dr. Kwame John R. Porter, mm -hmm. recent ancestor, his name, John, my mother, June, and so from there, my parents were so creative. They gave us all J names. So my brother, John, the oldest, he passed uh, last year. And uh, from there, we have Joe, um, Julia, Jessica, Georgia, and I'm Jerry Ann. Mm -hmm. However, um, at the time, it's funny, my mom was going to name me Jamila. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and her cousin named her daughter that. We're six months apart. And so she creatively came up with Jerry Ann. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it was um, when I went away to college. Um, I first went to Bennett College for Women in Greensboro, oh, North Carolina. Okay. And um, it was about 114 degrees one day. And so uh, my roommate, who was from Texas, she was so used to that heat. Coming from Chicago, I wasn't. <laughs> She's like, um, 
Did you know you had Africa on your back? Because I think I must have had on like a, 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 a tube top. She said, you know you got Africa on your back? I was like, what? What do you mean? She's like, yeah, you got Africa on your back. So she uh, had me turn around to a double mirror. And on my back, on this side, it looks like the continent. Mm -hmm. So later that night, um, the um, AKA's sponsored um, Sister Soldier. Mm -hmm. So this was 1992. She came to speak at our school. Does, did she rock your world? Listen, like listen. <laughs> yes. We at war, because I told you. That's mm. what she used to say. Mm -hmm. um, so she came, and um, they. I get the opportunity to introduce her. And my roommate, she said, we're going to have uh, Sister Africa introduce uh, Sister Soldier. And I'm like, so really, how I got the name, it just kind of come to popped it into something like that. Um, Sister Soldier and I um, became fast friends and were communicating all the time and building, restructuring the community from the East Coast to where I was in North Carolina, back to Chicago. So that's how that name situation kind of happened. <laughs> wow, wow, what a beautiful, beautiful story. And so when you were a kid, what did you dream of being when you grow up or, you know, I mean, you've grown up, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love that. So. I always wanted to be a uh, newscaster, mm -hmm. and um, I remember, wow, um, my father, um, man, he just, if you want to do something, he made sure you get to what you want to do. Um, he took me down to um, WMAQ Channel 5, I must have been in seventh grade, and we met with someone there, uh, we came back home, and he sent like a, 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 a telegram, <laughs> wow really dating myself and uh, <laughs> I remember um, seeing it come back and uh, we went down and we did a shadow day and we followed some of the newscasters there. Mm -hmm. When I came home from college, after been in college, I went to Russ College in Holly Springs, Mississippi and studied journalism there. Um, I came back home and my dad uh, took me to PUSH, of which he was one of the founders of that great organization, the National Rainbow Push Coalition under the great leadership of the great Reverend Jesse Lewis Jackson. And from there, um, I studied under Stephanie Gatlin, mm -hmm. and she was his press secretary, so I was the press secretary associate. Um, and I started doing live uh, videos, right? Um, so interesting. Before it was a thing, like how we're doing it. <laughs> and I had a show on the campus um, called Ebony Vibes mm -hmm. at uh, Russ College, and I started writing for the Restorian paper there. And I always saw myself delivering the news because at that time, we're talking about the early 90s, mm -hmm. um, I didn't see a lot of black faces on TV mm -hmm. in positive ways. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to be the black woman that delivered the news um, for the world so they could see a black woman's face and put the visual together and see that narrative that not all black people in media are doing negative things that they would like to show us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's what I really wanted to do. I wanted to be a... a newscaster. So because I know you, I'm going to assume you're not a, exactly a newscaster. <laughs> you know, I mean, I tell people I didn't wake up and say, oh, I want to be a pastor. Mm -hmm. Life kind of guides, nudge us, and mm -hmm. we have things. And so tell us just a little bit about how life has pulled you to where you are kind of now. Absolutely. So for me right now, um, I um, own a public relations firm. Uh, Africa Enterprises, and that's Africa spelled with a K, Enterprises. It's a consulting firm where we specialize in bringing out the best in us. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people start a business, they need public relations for that new business. You want to let people know that you are existing, that you're doing whatever it is that you're called to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we have artists, entertainers, authors, uh, entertainers, actors, um, new businesses, startups, um, politicians, everyone needs some PR, especially when you're trying to get the word out about who you are and what you're doing. So we started um, this company about 10 years ago, and it has um, catapulted into um, some great clients and some great relationships. Mm -hmm. um, I had been doing public relations for quite some while. I did not know it was that. Um, <laughs> My family, they do such an awesome job of connecting people mm -hmm. and of just loving on people and sharing resources. So I just thought that's just what I'm supposed to do. It wasn't until um, my youngest son, Jabril, he graduated from eighth grade from my homeschool community, and he wanted to, um, for his graduation present, 
he wanted to go to a Bulls game. Well, Derek Ross was playing at the time, and he wanted to um, <clears throat> have sit on the floor where he can be right there. So I said, okay, let's go and pray on this. Yeah, the tickets cost. We can work, we can work some out. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, God is so good. We were blessed and able to get some floor seats. So we're at the Bulls game, and I haven't been to a game in years. I see a friend of mine that I grew up with, and he was like, hey, we up in the skybox. You should come up here. So I was like, okay. Um, he's like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm still doing my music and everything. I'm like, you are? Because he always rapped and made beats. I'm like, that's what's up. He said, yeah, um, you still keep in touch with Kanye? I was like, uh, why? What's going on? <laughs> he was like, I was hoping you can get my music to him. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, can't promise anything. You know what I mean? Uh, we'll see what we can do. You know what I'm saying? Um, my best friend was managing Kanye at the time. So I said, uh, we'll see. We took a picture. I wasn't even on Twitter then. Mm -hmm. um, he put it on Twitter, and people were at the game. was just like, oh, you're at the game. Um, I met um, Derek Rose's family, and they kind of watched this happen. Mm -hmm. um, we go out to dinner after the game. We're all having a great time. And someone said, well, you know that um, that was a PR move you did, you know, mm -hmm. connecting him to Kanye. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, no, nah, he's my friend. We grew up together. Mm -hmm. I would have connected him anyway. Right. It was just a blessing that I ran into him. No. No, 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 no. People get paid to do what you did. Mm -hmm. I was like, really? Mm -hmm. But that's what I do. You know what I mean? I always mm -hmm. do it. So it kind of um, manifested into mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And I found out that I really enjoy it. You know, and I'm like, why not? You know, get a couple of dollars for connecting. You know, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. that's exactly how it happened. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Africa, you always seem to have so much spirit. No matter when I see you, you have a smile on your face, you're upbeat. And even though I know you understand oppression and mm -hmm. really some of the evils that are happening yeah. in our mm -hmm. world, you still keep it really positive. So what's your secret to just keeping your spirit kind of pure and in a good place? Hmm. Wow, I love that. Wow. It is a lot going on. Um, one of my hashtags is, uh, we are our own solution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another is, we are we got. Another is, we are who we've been waiting for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the one I really, really hashtag the most is winning <laughs> because we see so much of what's not that I want to offset that and give some balance to it by pushing the narrative so positive. So I'm always hashtag winning, mm -hmm. whether it's a new baby, a new job. I woke up this morning feeling great. You know, someone posting a Jill Scott song, winning. Mm -hmm. So for me, I do understand oppression and the challenges, which is why I try to always keep it upbeat and keep it positive for myself. I like to think about, <coughs> even though we have challenges and we do, I like to think about uh, our ancestors. Mm -hmm. I always think, you know, when it's um, that time for me as a woman, you know, and I'm cramping, I'm not feeling my best, I still got to get up, I still got to go to work, I still have to make my appointments with my clients, I still have to go do my speaking events, whatever it is I have to do, I still got an adult, <laughs> I still got a parent, grandparent. Mm -hmm. I um, think back to what it must have been like to have all the pressures that they had back then. Mm -hmm. And to, let's say that the sister was on her cycle, mm -hmm. but you still got to get in that field, you got to pick the cotton, Mm -hmm. You got to go and, and breastfeed their children and have a little bit left for your own. You know, um, the mental anguish, the physical and the spiritual, uh, bug breaking, all these things that um, historically have taken place to our people. That's a motivator for me. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. mama would always say, listen, Jerry, they got four fingers and a thumb. You can go do it. Mm -hmm. So I take all of that you know, and I do my breathing exercises, you know, um, my good sister's idea therapy lady, she does a lot with breath work mm -hmm. and yoga. Um, I subscribe to a lot of that to have balance. Um, I have something uh, that I look at on my phone every day that simply says, good things are going to happen for me today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I go into my day with that mantra. So no matter what happened the night before, and I tend to get a nice amount of calls from people being shot, people being murdered, 
someone being kidnapped, uh, another missing girl or boy. I get a lot of those calls from the activism hat. However, before I go to sleep, um, I just uh, pray to the Most High mm -hmm. to cover me, my family, and everyone in the world. And I also meditate, you know, a good 15, 20 minutes, you know. I try to take nice long baths. I turn my bathroom into a spa. Mm -hmm. I have to create that for myself, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So that contributes to the upbeatness, you know. And I just try to um, be more intentional right. in terms right. of uh, my relationships and who I care about. And those I don't. Um, we had a program. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a program where we just um, would ride the train mm -hmm. for the intentional purpose of just having interactions with people. Because mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, you get in your car, you get in your world, in your zone, and you don't even come in contact with people like that. Mm -hmm. So, and we learned a lot during that process. Uh, an example, we sat on the train, my mentor, uh, Reverend Catherine Jackson, and I one time, and we heard mm -hmm. some young ladies really 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 cute intelligent young ladies they have the books they're reading their books they're talking and one of them said yeah well you know um Aisha's pregnant again mm -hmm. and that's one said she is and, and the other sister said yeah yeah you know she's pregnant about her brother mm -hmm. yeah so what, what you doing this weekend I said excuse me I can't help but hear your conversation mm -hmm. did you just say that you know someone that is pregnant by her brother? Oh, that's a second one. Mm -hmm. I said, well, if I may, mm -hmm. I use the term sister and brother loosely. Mm -hmm. right. Sister Charlene, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. brother here, because I like to encompass family. Right. So when I'm talking to anybody, we brothers and sisters. That way, we take that fear factor out. We take that I'm going to hurt you out. We take that sense of competition out. Mm -hmm. Hey, sister, how you feeling? I'm embracing you. I don't mm -hmm. even have to know you, right? Mm -hmm. I said, are you saying that to say like that? Or are you saying brother like biologically, like mm -hmm. DNA, like same mom and dad, or maybe one of the same mother or father? Right, right. That's oh, no, clarification. No, no. <laughs> Listen. She said, oh, no, that's her brother. Mm -hmm. I said, hey, can I give you my card? Mm -hmm. Because for me, if we are not intentional about that, Another, you know, we believe in a sister circle for the Deborah movement that came mm -hmm. out of the Black Star Project with the mm -hmm. late great Philip Jackson. Mm -hmm. And we formed an organization called the Deborahs, right? You know, the Deborahs out of the Book of Judges. Mm -hmm. And we would go and go to different gas stations and convene and just talk to people and see what their needs were, see how we can mm -hmm. intercede. There was a pregnant young girl at a gas station on 35th and King Drive asking to pump gas. Mm -hmm. We were like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And sometimes you have to be careful because someone may not be pregnant, right? So we can I pump your gas, ma'am? Are you okay? Are you expecting, sister? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because I don't know. He don't, he don't want to keep it. I ain't had no money to get no abortion. I just, here's our number. Mm -hmm. So, we have to be more intentional about who we are, who we say we are, mm -hmm. who we're called to be, what we're here to do. Mm -hmm. And for me, I take it very literal um, in terms of providing those conversations, those safe spaces, mm -hmm. and those resources. Yeah. And yeah. if we don't have it, we know somebody that got it. So connecting, you know, back to what you kind of said. Um, tell us something about you that we don't know. So the average person watching you today might know you a little bit. They may know you. Uh, but tell us something about you we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like what? I don't know. Because uh, you're so transparent, right? <laughs> it's all there. <laughs> the memoir has been written. Huh? <laughs> well, um, you, know, you know, coming over COVID was tough for all of us. Mm -hmm. I think everyone lost someone. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I lost over 300 people. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to a good friend of mine, and he said, well, Africa, that's a, a probability and statistics thing with you, mm -hmm. because you know so many people that, of course, you know, some people may have, they can say they lost five people, but you know so many people that your numbers are going to be more because of the contacts and the relationships and the people you know. And I said, yeah, but that's just a lot. It's a lot. Um, 
I think during COVID, um, I'm the executive producer of a film, Chicago at the Crossroads. Mm-hmm. And um, this film was written and uh, directed and produced by Brian Shortoff mm-hmm. mm-hmm. of Shortoff mm-hmm. Media mm-hmm. Collective. And we came together. He had been working on this film project for some years before I came on board. We came together and um, put some great, great, great people in this documentary to tell the story of solutions to violence from a housing perspective. Mm -hmm. So Brian, a native of Kansas, like my parents, (laughs) he came here to go to school at Columbia College. And while he was there, the Pacific Garden Mission used to be right there by Columbia. He couldn't understand. You go blocks and blocks and blocks, you downtown, homeless shelter. He's, what's really happening here? Brian started getting the video footage of the projects while they were tearing them down, CHA. From there, that turned into this film, Chicago mm-hmm. at the Crossroad, Speed Up. Um, he hired me as the executive producer. Uh, we got uh, Dr. the late, great Dr. Timmy O'Black. Wow. Um, mm-hmm. I say. Um, Reverend Jackson, great Reverend Jackson. Uh, my mentor, Dr. Carol Adams, um, mm-hmm. Pastor Phil Jackson mm-hmm. uh, from the West Side, uh, and uh, so many others, GLC, uh, Malik Youssef, my brother, the narrator, uh, Grammy Award winning Malik Youssef, poet extraordinaire, mm-hmm. and so many others uh, to partake in this film. Mm-hmm. And during COVID, this was the first time they didn't do um, the Emmy celebration in person. Mm-hmm. So. We were all watching it. It was on PBS. It was live. And I just was excited that we were putting this film together to provide some dialogue, some solution to a conversation people always talk about. Why do they move everybody from the projects to country club here? Why do they move? You know, so it was all these conversations. Where is generations of families going? What about the black belt? Redlining? You know, mm-hmm. all these things that go into housing, right? And how we live. Mama and I were sitting there. We were watching it. You know, we had been nominated for seven Emmys. I am still in shock. Like, I'm getting goosebumps. I'm still in shock that we won five Emmys for this film. Wow. And uh, again, for me, what I do, I do it because it's what I was told. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I was taught to always help others. I was taught to love others. I was taught to be considerate of others. And doing so, when the opportunity presented itself for me to utilize my film background from the University of Chicago and this film project, I was honored. Mm-hmm. I was mm-hmm. thankful. Mm-hmm. I never would have imagined that we would have won these Emmys like this. Yeah, yeah. So that's something that I think, you know, maybe people would not know. I never would have thought. I'm just, I'm, I'm still and shock like yeah. all I did was what I was supposed to do <laughs> but I'm, I'm honored and I'm thankful and it's been a um, an amazing 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 beat yeah I think because I follow you on Facebook or we're on Facebook we're Facebook friends that I had some idea and I think you traveled to California but that might not have yeah. been with the that was with the Emmy was no. well uh, we did the um, Catalina Film Festival there leading okay. up to the nominations for the Emmy okay um, we did the um, St. Louis International uh, their um, ABBF uh, mm-hmm. American Black Film Festival in uh, Miami uh, but um, Los Angeles uh, was um, for uh, Oprah um Greater at <laughs> the uh, conversations with black women okay. through own network. Um, so that was to be a part of that show, um, dealing with uh, finances, um, trauma, um, everything that you know. Black women, as a lot of the world sees us, we put our capes on. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and we have to be the mama, the nurse, the doctor, the nurturer. You know, the financier. We wear all these hats as black women, um, and so that going to uh, Los Angeles was particularly for conversations with black women. And beautiful thing about that is um, I have some girlfriends that are just fantastic. Um, they're twins, um, Sherry and Shelly McAdoo. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, they both work in these creative spaces of media uh, with some of our greats. And they invited me to come. And I was so thankful to be invited. But not only to be invited, but they allowed me to um, bring some other people Mm-hmm. So, 
it's just, it's always nice, you know, if someone calls you and they think about you to say hi, that's a blessing because mm-hmm. nobody has to care. But to invite you and then you are allowed to bring some other people. And it was people that were in spaces of entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. So that's where um, Essie Marie's, her dressings are at uh, Pete's, Whole Foods, Mariano's. Mm-hmm. Um Mama loves her dress, and she bought a whole case of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she's my, she's my well, dear friend. You know, when you know, when you find something you like. <laughs> Listen, she's my dear friend. Her name is um, Shani. Uh-huh. And um, she came. Uh, Inglewood Barbie. Mm-hmm. Um, I yeah. Think would oh, be man. a great guest for you. Yeah, um, I, I want to get her, you know. But, oh. you know, she, she's her own. Yeah, I, you know, I'm trying to get our youth to do a night as well. So oh, I will you know, help you. I'll with let that. you know. Yeah, I will definitely help but, you with that. Oh my God! So every she, time she speaks, I I cry. Listen, just like, her spirit is like she's another dynamic sister. She, I will definitely help you get her on here. Okay, she came, um, and we just had such a great, great, great time. Uh, my stylist and my sister, Loveborn of Love Lines, mm-hmm. she came. Um, Saidia, you know, um, mm-hmm. my massage therapist and yoga instructor and breathing. And through the years, she came, I mean, Tashima, I mean, my girlfriend, Tashima, she has a best-selling book on Amazon. Um, she's a mother of nine. I mean, she was the youngest person to run for Alderman in Chicago when she lived here. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, it allowed me the peace to invite some dynamic women to come and share their stories on this huge platform. Nicole Wheatley, who I met with this morning, she's my mentor, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, she's three years older than me, but... I seek guidance and counsel from her yeah. because she knows so many things I just don't. Mm-hmm. And she's able to help me really get myself in a position to be better. Yeah. So I'm just really, 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 really thankful. Um, and that Los Angeles trip brought out some wonderful things that I got to learn more about myself, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm almost going to wrap it up. But, I, you know, one of the things I do remember... Um, about you was when the carjacking, well, the carjacking is still very much real and happening. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But last year, when it seemed like it was really getting the attention of people, you and others were out at the gas station. Yes. Um, since then, I don't know if you saw the CBS report where they interviewed mm-hmm. three kids under mm-hmm. 16 years old and one was a female, yeah. you know, just carjacking. And they seemed kind of... they. They were presented as nonchalant. I don't know what their full story is. Yeah. You know, the parents didn't speak. So, you know, when you interview someone for a short period of time like yeah. that, I, I wonder, you know, there are questions I have besides yeah, yeah. what gets presented. To, Absolutely. To, so, you know, do you have any insight on just the carjacking? You know, Chicago gets painted as a, a violent city. And, I, I, you know, I love Chicago, even though I wasn't born here, mm-hmm. you know. Um, what do you think is happening actually in Chicago in terms of the violence tip? I mean, does that feel real to you? I don't think there's an easy, quick answer, but, you know, what do you think is happening in, in Chicago, you know, as far as violence and saying that it's getting worse? Um, I went to the police conversations with the Bronzeville community or the Fourth Ward, mm-hmm. and now people are talking about being afraid to come out of their homes, you know. Um, so, I mean, we're still seeing carjacking. Actually, a personal friend of mine was carjacked last mm-hmm. month and just mm. distraught, you know, that somebody would walk up on her porch and take her keys and, you know, take off with the car. So I don't know what we're looking at. You know, I don't fully know. I, I don't like to make a lot of judgments, yeah. but wondering if you, you know, what's your insight on this journey, you know? Wow. Uh, thank you. Because um, for me, you know, last year, Early last year around this time, you know, three of my very, 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 very close girlfriends were carjacked at gunpoint. One of them was putting her grandchildren in the car. So as she's putting them in the car, she turns around with a gun to her head. So, and I saw that on Facebook. And then one of them called me. So, and then two of them have since relocated. Mm -hmm. Um, I just, again, I can't keep being the receiver Mm -hmm. and hearing everything. And I'm just, oh, okay, I'm going to pray for you. No, no, no. Even the word said prayer without works. Yeah, Come on, man. We ain't doing that. We ain't doing that. (laughs) So that's when I said, you know what? (laughs) Let me call some of these brothers who are always on the front line, Mm -hmm. who are always doing this work, and see what we can do. Mm Because enough is enough. So that's where your uh, T.O. Hardiman's come, your Mm -hmm. Tyrone Mm Muhammad's, your Mm -hmm. Marquette McDonald's. 
and so many others, um, Jermont Montgomery, uh, Stephen Desjois, all these, A.C. Green, all these men came together. So I, I don't uh, take credit for any of that. Mm -hmm. and I really didn't even want to do the news story. We were just but supposed you were to, connecting, right? Right, but see, we were supposed to meet there that day mm -hmm. to talk, and then one of them called the news because that night before it was nine carjackings, and so he called Brother Jim from uh, Channel Two CBS to come out there, and I was out there with all these men, like, no, 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 I ain't, I ain't here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I just kind of like stumbled out the bed, like, let me come out here. And that's why you caught me raw, like, ah! You, know, but, you didn't but, look um, raw. <laughs> I, <laughs> I wasn't ready for no cameras, but yeah. But sometimes I think, you know, you have to be ready. And I mean, I was um, very, very passionate about it. And I mean, when it happens to my sister, it's happening to me. Right. When it happens to my brother, it is me. Right. Because when I see my sister and my brother, I see myself. And I want for them what I have myself. So yeah, that's a communal effort. Mm -hmm. So. From then to now, um, Carjackings are back up. I just did a phone conference the other night. I right. talked to Alderman Dow. I've spoken with uh, Alderman um, Sophia King, mm -hmm. um, the commanders. So there are some things happening as it pertains to um, this frequency, I like to call it. There's a frequency um, that is obviously off because for someone to feel that that's okay to do, that says a lot about character. Mm -hmm. That says a lot about person. So um, I can't speak to the children and the why. I have talked to quite a few. Um, one night I was actually um, walking um, over here, uh, leaving Whole Foods, and I had my sweatshirt on, my hood on, it was cold. Mm -hmm. And um, some young guys jumped out of a car. And um, they just was approaching me. I didn't think much of it. And I just turned around just in case, right? Mm -hmm. And so I just turned around and I said, hey, what's happening? Mm -hmm. Oh, we ain't on nothing. Why y'all not on nothing? Mm -hmm. What y'all need? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we was just trying to get something to eat. Oh, okay, yeah. what y'all want? Mm -hmm. I don't think they were ready for that response from me, right? Mm -hmm. With my shades on and my mask, you don't know who's who now. Mm -hmm. um, come to find out, one of them was my girlfriend's son. So what I do? Hold on. See, we're not going to keep playing these games. Mm -hmm. I don't know what... The outcome could have been, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I didn't waste time and wait to see either, right? Mm -hmm. you, I think sometimes, and we don't know, just like the situation earlier on with the brother um, in front of the popcorn shop on Western, one of the first carjacking uh, killings that happened. Um, my good girlfriend, um, whose father, um, Kanika yeah. Carlton, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, those two students um, are students that I've worked with, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times it's like, we pointing the finger, we pointing the blame. Let me look at myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew those babies. You know, I know them. They were in our program, you know. So I think it's about us all working together, us all having conversations like this, us all checking in on one another. Mm -hmm. And I think it's as simple as speaking. Mm -hmm. We've gotten to a point, even before COVID, people walking next to you and they purposely look at the phone. Ain't nobody on that phone. You just don't want to have any eye contact or speak to the person next to you. Mm -hmm. I think, and for whatever reason, you know, we, we've gotten to a place in society where we're afraid to acknowledge one another and just say hi. I don't want none of them just say, how you doing? So I think if we can get back to some basics, mm -hmm. you know, not being so afraid to acknowledge one another and just speaking and acknowledging each other, especially when it comes to our young people. They just want to know that we see them. That's it. That's mm -hmm. it. This morning on my way here, my mentor was sharing with me that a young man um, came up on uh, a guy delivering food to her yesterday mm -hmm. and was yelling at him, you know what time it is, what time is it, what time is it? Mm -hmm. And the brother delivering the food had a disability. He's walking mm -hmm. with a limp. Mm -hmm. So the energy was, you know, it was two young men. Were they gonna, you know, come up on him because they saw him vulnerable? She didn't waste no time. She said, what are you all doing? Mm -hmm. You know, then today, before we came here, we went to the school because mm -hmm. she had pictures of them. These are two young men. We need to find out who their parents are. It's about being proactive. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. not going to go another day and not know what's going on with these young men in their mind. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And I understand everyone don't have the capacity. Everyone don't have the time. Somebody got to make the time. Somebody got to have the capacity. Otherwise, we all going to be in the same situation over and over and over and over again. No, I definitely, I definitely agree with you. So you're, you're, you're so passionate and you have so much on your plate. 
Um, how do you, you know, um, well, this is a question I ask everybody. What's on your bucket list to do? So, you know, you got, you got not save the world, but save your community <laughs> on your mind, you know, <laughs> public relationships, yeah. being positive, making the connections for people. Um, and you've lived a, a, a full life already. I know we want to live more, you mm -hmm. know, we claim that as well. Um, what's on your bucket list to do, you know, before you transition and, you know, go be with the ancestors and dad, you know, what's yeah. on your bucket list? What would you, what's one other thing you'd like to do? Hmm. Well, I definitely would like to travel um, mm -hmm. when things open up or things are safer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I would like to uh, travel. Um, I've not been to Africa. Um, it's my namesake. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to go home and, um, Right now, um, I have a contract um, through uh, My Turn to Own. Mm -hmm. um, this is a uh, initiative, a company that wants to see 75% uh, of home ownership uh, for people to look like us. Mm -hmm. um, this is um, a program where J. Maul Green is the president. Mm -hmm. uh, we mm -hmm. know him because he's a young activist, he ran for mayor, and at 25 years old, he started this company because after shutting down dozens of Chase Bakes for giving out bad home loans to black people during COVID when people mm -hmm. didn't have the regular working situations, he's been afforded the opportunity to make sure that people have good credit. They understand their taxes. They understand debt to income ratio. They understand cleansing their debt. They understand working and being a homeowner mm -hmm. and that freedom that comes with that. I would like to see more people become homeowners. And it's a joy with this contract that I have um, as a project manager to be on the receiving end and hear the joy in their, on the phone when they say, I can have my credit score up. I think I can get that building. I think I can get that. Um, I would like to see more of that. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to travel. Um, I definitely want to see my grandson happy, um, his mom, my sons. I want to see my children uh, prosper and what it is they want to do. Yeah, that's that that sounds so good. So as we're about to wrap up, you mentioned that you were a part of making this film here in Chicago and voices like uh, Mr. Black mm -hmm. and et cetera that were on the video. If we would, if if people listening to us are interested in watching this, how would we watch it? Could you give us information on how we could watch the sure. documentary? Sure, sure, thank you. You can see Chicago at the Crossroads by going to www.chicagoatthecrossroad.com. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you guys, check out the documentary. And if you want to know more about Africa, follow her on Facebook. She doesn't discriminate, so she'll probably say <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it's been so good, Africa, having you on Crooked Curse. I appreciate you. Congratulations on everything that you are doing. I follow you as well. <laughs> I love your interviews, your interview style. And it's so important that we continue to have these conversations. And thank you again for having me. And thank you for being my mother's past. Oh. <laughs>